What's going on YouTube? Chamber Productions coming back at you with another Transformers video review. And in today's video, I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Kingdom Titan Class Autobot arc. Now, first off, we're going to start this review by taking a look at the amazing packaging this guy comes in. We can see here on the front, we got a picture of the arc. Uh, he's holding Megatron. You can see the arc in his shuttle mode, um, all that great stuff. Um, here on the top, we've got a picture of the Autobot insignia. We've even got the Nemesis War for Cybertron trilogy. And if we continue to look here on the side, we've got Starscream, Black Arachnia, and Air Razor. If we come around here to the side, we've got that standard uh, Kingdom packaging uh, design there. And this just continues a wraparound image of the arc and says Titan Class. If we come around here to the back, we can see all the product shots of the arc and whatnot everything it can do you get the arc in his robot mode the shuttle mode we've got mainframe which can turn into teletran one and two uh turn into a um bridge control for the arc itself i'll get into that here in a little bit and then some of the accessories he comes with and some of the functions very very nice uh box that he comes in i do keep this displayed with the arc so overall the packaging looks really really nice and moving right along, we'll take a look at some of the accessories the art comes with. Uh, first off, he comes with a handful of blast effect pieces. Um, there are six of these total, and you can uh, merge them together like so to make blast effects. For the shuttle mode, which I will show you later on, but they're this nice blue plastic. I really like these. I think they look really cool. Setting those off to the side. We also do get a teeny, teeny tiny Optimus Prime. This is a little teeny tiny little baby fetus Optimus Prime. Look at this little guy, but it's cast in yellow translucent plastic and painted red and it doesn't look too terribly bad. So we do get Optimus Prime. Also standard with a majority of the Kingdom figures, we get a collector's card. This is Dinobot. Uh, I have a few Dinobot cards. Um, I don't really mind though. So Dinobot, there we have that. He does come with an instruction poster, pretty much. This thing is absolutely ginormous. It shows you both the transformation for the arc and mainframe, but overall very, very nice. And then we do get a warning paper. So there you have all of that. And here we have the Autobot arc. Now, unfortunately, before I can really move into the arc itself, I've got to talk about Mainframe first, which is actually stored within the arc itself. So that's really cool. And to access Mainframe, uh, I'll go into this a little bit more in detail, but there is a tab here and a tab here. You're going to want to pull out just a little bit in order to make the whole assembly able to open up. Like so, then we're gonna take this panel here fold it back and then pull this whole assembly up and then reach inside here and pull out mainframe and then we'll close all that back up. I'm going to put them back in after I get done with his showcase. And here we have mainframe in his command center mode. Now there's not a whole lot really to this. You can really kind of just see that the robot mode's kind of balled up to make this, but we can see there's some nice details up here on the deck. You can see the command uh, the command station right here. We've got a little planet that's been molded in yellow translucent plastic, which does actually come out and you can see just a tiny little planet thing. So that's very nice. You can see that just pegs in right up top. Um, but overall, pretty nice. You got all these pegs here. So you can take your little teeny tiny baby Optimus Prime and plug him in. And he's supposed to stay pegged in, but mine doesn't stay tabbed in too terribly well. But it is an option if you want to do it. So overall, command center mode doesn't look too terribly bad on its own, but it definitely does look fantastic when it's in the arc. Now for main fame's transformation to robot mode, it is pretty simplistic. You're basically just going to unfold the figure. And to do the transformation, as I mentioned, just take the legs here, fold them down and out like so. Straighten them out, separate them. Then you're going to take the torso, spin it around. Then we're going to take these panels here, open them up, and then that will give you clearance to fold the feet around and then just close that back up like so. Do that on both sides to open this up, swivel this around, and then close the shin back up. And there we have the legs. Now you do get Spy Sky with the, the whole set and everything, and he does store within Mayframe. There is a little peg right here and a little peg hole on the back of them and there's just this little satellite dude looks really good nothing wrong with them pa uh, it's cast in orange painted in silver and then you got these little gray uh, wings here on the side um, I just keep them in mainframe 
keep him in there, just have them into place, like so. He doesn't interfere with the transformation. Uh, moving right along, untap the arms from the side, take the main body here, pull it out, and then pull out the head and spin it around, and then take this, the, the main section here, and make sure that the wings are facing up to get clearance past these little cutouts in the neck, just like so, tap all that into place, take these panels here, open them up to fold out his hands, do that on both sides, bop, and here we have mainframe in his robot mode. And mainframe in his robot mode looks really, really good. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with him. He's definitely a little bit on the kibbly side, definitely very blocky, but overall, I think the robot mode looks really good. We got some nice details here in the front, tampographed on the head sculpt, looks really nice and has this whole visor is light piped and I absolutely love it. You got some silver with an Autobot insignia there. Overall, not a whole lot to him. Very, very good looking figure. Again, very blocky, has a good bit of kibble hanging off of him, but it's definitely worth it for the two modes that he can be used for. Now going over mainframe's articulation, the head is on a full 360 swivel, unfortunately no ball joint, um, but you do get that awesome light piping, so that is more than enough to make up for it on my terms. Arms on a swivel can almost go 360, well they can go 360 if you get cleared of all the back kibble here. You do have outwards movement, 360 bicep swivel, um, 90 degree elbow bend, no wrist swivel, unfortunately. You do get a waist swivel as seen during the transformation, but it's blocked up by the back kibble. You do get forwards movement and not a whole lot backwards, and then you do get a good degree of outward movement. You get a 360 thigh swivel and a good knee bend, and the feet are really well articulated. You've got a swivel here, and then you do got a ankle you do have an ankle tilt right here so overall mainframe's got some pretty decent posability uh not the best but he definitely does have enough to pull off some good poses and for some quick robot mode size comparisons here is uh, kingdom deluxe class cheetor let's bring in kingdom voyager class dino bot so we can see he's roughly about voyager class size a little bit shorter than dino bot so he is roughly a Voyager, and here we have Kingdom Leader Class Megatron. So, yeah, uh, mainframe is um, mainframe is pretty much a Voyager. So, uh, yeah, that's your size comparison. Now, mainframe does have one more mode, and he does transform into Teletran One. So, to do that, what you're going to want to do, we're going to start off with taking this whole assembly here, pulling it out, taking the head, swiveling it around, and pushing it up, and having this back into place down here. We're going to take the waist and swivel it around like so. Then, what we're going to want to do and straighten out the arms, take these panels back here, open them up, and you do get two golden discs with the whole set and everything, and taking these out just to show them to you. We've got this one here, which has been sculpted and painted really nicely. If we come to the back here, we can see the Sounds of Earth written here on the back, and then we do have this one, Sounds of Earth, as well, with all these nice hieroglyphs and stuff. So overall, very welcomed addition to the set. Um, I'm definitely going to give these to my Kingdom Dinobot and Megatron, but take these panels here and open them up just like so. Then what you're going to want to do is take this assembly here and open it up just like so. Take the foot, rotate it to the side. We're going to do that on both legs. So open these panels up, rotate the foot to the side, and tab the legs together and joint them up and have them tab in to this section right here like so and drop the golden discs all over your review station. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to take these panels on the inside here and push them up and out like so and push the legs into place. Now these do rest just like so. I'm going to come to the arm here and then take the hand, fold it in, and then rotate the arm down and tab. There is a peg hole right here and a peg right here and there is a peg right here and a peg hole here that will tab into place right like so. Tap all that in and there you have one side of Teletran done. We're going to repeat the same process on this side. Take this, tab it into place like so and then take this panel here, fold it up 
and have it into place and have it pop off the hinge. Uh, this one side loves to just pop off, um, but it just tabs in super easily. So make sure all that's organized. And here we have Teletran 1 transformed in, into, well, Teletran 1 mode. And Teletran 1 looks like Teletran 1. It looks really, really good. I'll just straighten this out. Um, it looks just like it did from the cartoon with all the, you got all these details here. We've got Vector Sigma, the York, we've got a map of Earth, we've got the Matrix of Leadership, and all these details that have been sculpted very nicely. Some other details there on the front. The back, just kind of the robot unfolded. Um, you can store the golden discs inside. So overall, I mean, this works really good as a Teletran one piece. And, you know, it looks really really good. I think that was a really cool inclusion of Hasbro to make um, Mainframe turn into part of the arc and then um, Teletran 1. And you don't even need Teletran 1 to complete the arc. The arc can be its own figure without uh, Mainframe here. So very, very cool inclusion. So getting ready to draw Mainframe back into the arc again, you don't need Mainframe to complete the arc shuttle mode or his robot mode for that matter. And you even have enough room down in this compartment here to fit core class figures and even some small deluxe class figures. But just dropping Mainframe back into place and closing this whole assembly up just like so. Making sure everything's got the proper clearance it needs. Making sure all that snaps together. Pulling this back up. Here we have the Autobot arc in shuttle mode. And I've got to say, this looks absolutely fantastic. Is it perfect? No, definitely not. We have these massive gaps here on the side. We've got some right here um, as well. But I mean, overall, visually speaking, the arc looks absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of molded in detail that you can see here. We've got all these little guns that you can't articulate, um, unfortunately, but you got all these guns here up on the top and you've even got some here down on the bottom. We've got these accents of blue that are just absolutely fantastic looking. You've even got this metallic wash here on the front to make it look like it has had some weathering. Now, bringing the arc in so you can really get a look at it. You can see here we've got this translucent cockpit here at the front, uh, if that's what you want to call it, but very nice looking. Uh, got the command tower up there, some yellow accents and whatnot. Very, very nice shuttle mode. You can see the uh, the interior there, that mainframe, ma mainframe makes through the yellow translucent plastic up there. Very, very, very nice. Trying to angle it so where you can see towards the back, we've got these beautiful Autobot insignias um, stamped loud and proud here on the back. Taking a look at the thrusters here, you can see they've been painted a beautiful, beautiful blue color that fades into dark blue. Unfortunately, on my copy, uh, one of these intakes here, if you look right here, I can't really see it all too terribly well. I've had to glue this little spike back into place because it was starting to snap and break, which does kind of bug me um, for a figure of this um, price point and whatnot, but definitely is not a deal breaker. Here at the back, we actually have an opening door. If you press this button right here, it does drop open. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have any functionality, but it does look really, really cool. Closing that back up, you do have functioning landing gear here on the side that are here on the bottom that does just fold up like so and I'll show that a little bit more during the transformation. The bottom of the ship mode doesn't look too terribly bad. Uh, we got some more sculpted in detail and whatnot, some more cannons on the bottom, some more blue accents. So, I mean, overall, the arc does look very, very nice when in shuttle mode. Now, one of my other critiques with the arc itself is that this back section here has a little bit of give because this panel will not tab into this section here. I've tried and I just cannot get it to tab into place. Um, so that is a bit unfortunate. Um, my other issue I have with the arc in its shuttle mode is the color matching. You can see here this whole uh, front section is uh, not the same color that they've used for, us, for the rest of the ship. And uh, same goes for this tower here. It's a little bit, it's, it's better color match. Um, my only other critique that I have with the figures, if I come around to the back here, uh, mine does not want to stay in, uh, stay tabbed in right here all the way, but you know, not that big of an issue. But definitely with its issues aside, I think this looks absolutely fantastic. Now, as I previously mentioned, you can take the blast effect pieces that he does come with and spin the figure around this behemoth of a ship and you can take the blast effect pieces and we'll break them up into two. We'll do like this 
and they can peg into place here on the back to add an effect of him taking off. Um, I definitely feel like they should have been a little bit bigger, but they definitely do pull the job off quite nicely. Uh, it's unfortunately we didn't get a complete pair of each, but just to give you a look at that, you can see that does not look bad at all. Definitely a good display option. This is overall a very good display piece in general, and I think it really does look fantastic when in this mode. Definitely a centerpiece for uh, really any collector. Now for some size comparisons with this gargantuan figure. Let's start off with Core Class Kingdom Rat Trap. Bring in Deluxe Class Kingdom Cheetor. Let's bring in our Voyager Size Leader Class Optimus Prime. Uh, if you don't know the backstory of this figure, it is literally a Voyager Class Prime uh, at a leader class pr price point because they included the trailer. So there's your Voyager class size comparison there with Prime. And let's bring in a leader class uh, Galactic Man Shockwave for a spaceship size comparison there. So we can see this is definitely not a small figure by any means. And for measurement's sake, so you can get a estimated measurement of this figure, he is roughly, let's see here, roughly 17 inches in length and roughly if I can get it over this tower piece sorry guys roughly 16 inches in width so this is a ginormous figure now without further ado let's go ahead and get the arc transformed into his robot mode. Now to start off for the transformation, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just gonna go ahead and raise my camera up. I'm gonna need it, I'm just, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is start by taking the arc, pulling it up, and then taking the landing gear and folding it up if you have it deployed. And then take these panels here, they're these little sections right here untabbing them like so they do like to pop off if you're too hard on them so i uh, just gently try to unpeg these and then take this whole nose cone assembly here untab it and fold it back and into his back and there are a couple tabs right here and right here they'll tab into ports there and there and just tab all that into place like so. Now what we can do is bring the figure around. This is going to be a lot easy, a lot easier for you because you're not having to work behind the camera. Anyway, uh, taking this whole assembly here, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to take mainframe out for my mental sake, uh, but we'll put them back in during the final process. What you're going to want to do from here is take these sections here and fold them up and then tab them into place like so. And then take this panel right here, fold these sections up, and then fold them in. Keep that up. All right, now what we're going to do is take the arms here, fold them up, and then out like so. And they will snap into place very securely. So up and out like so. And then take this section here and fold it down and into place. And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take mainframe and slide him back in like so, just like that. All right, so from here, we're gonna take the arms and rotate them down like so. We're gonna do that on both sides. And they are in very tight and loud ratchet joints. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is take this assembly here, come down here to the bottom and open up this panel here, untab the tower and fold it up and then close this panel back in. Then we can rotate the entirety of the upper torso around just like so. Now we can take the robot mode arms here and take these and pull these down like so. I reckon I need to try to keep this in frame. All right, let's do this. Take the arms, fold them down like so. And we can take the hands that are stored on the inside here and fold them out and rotate them around. And we can just situate the hands, why not? All right, here, Adam. Take the other arm. Okay, take the other arm, fold this out, 
and rotate the hand around like so. Now we're going to take the legs here and we're going to separate them and hinge these down and then rotate them around like so. I need more room. Take the toe on the inside of the foot here, fold it out, and tap it into place. So, do that on both sides. Leg, thigh, down, toe. So, once you do all that, straighten the figure out, stand them up in whatever pose you wish. I'm going to straighten the arms out here. And here we have the Transformers Kingdom Titan Class Autobot Arc. I need to go take a break now. And here we have the Autobot Arc in his robot mode. And guys, I'm going to be honest, while the transformation, while not recording, is really fun to go through, I worked up a sweat. But... Here he is in his fantastic looking robot mode. And I've got to say, the look that they've accomplished for this figure looks really, really nice. I do like how this figure turned out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the details. So bringing the arc in so you can get a better look at all the details and everything. We can see here the feet have been molded. Oh, focus. Focus. There we go. Um, the feet have been molded really nicely and detailed really nicely. Uh, the thrusters carry over um, from the shuttle mode and end up on the shins and robot mode which i really really like uh one issue i thought i was going to have with this figure and it's not even an issue i just thought i wouldn't really like it is how um kind of thick the uh, the calves are for this figure because this is literally a chunk of the um the shuttle mode it doesn't actually bother me all that much i thought proportionally it would be kind of bothersome but uh it really doesn't bother me too terribly much it doesn't bother me at all actually um but overall uh sculpted in detail here on the thighs and everything looks really really nice we've got some silver paint right here um taking a look at his hands uh, uh, this is another area that concerned me when product pictures came out because i thought eh, his hands look really humanoid but they actually don't look too terribly bad could they have been a little bit more robotic uh yeah definitely um in my opinion but we do have some nice blue paint here on the forearms and the guns do carry over from shuttle mode and you've got some gray paint here some nice silver paint here on the sides some nice white autobot insignias um there on his shoulders you got those guns right up by his neck and his head sculpt looks absolutely fantastic trying to get the figure to stand still for you guys we can see the silver and that little hint of blue right there by his uh, lower jaw looks absolutely fantastic. The gray paint and everything really does look good for this figure. I like all the rivet detailing that they've done on the side of his face and everything. The sculpted in detail by his neck and whatnot, the yellow paint, all that looks really, really good. And the head is light piped as well. So that does look really, really nice. Um, spinning the figure around to the back, we can see that, uh, yeah, just a lot of details from the arc. Um, carry over uh, to robot mode see some details on the inside of the thighs some details there in the forearms on the back These cannons and the blue paint and whatnot overall very very good looking robot mode for this guy as good as this figure looks, he can also pull off some really, really awesome poses starting here at the head. The head can almost pull a full 360, um, unfortunately is blocked by some sculpted in detail here at the back. The arms here are on ratchet joints, just displaying that. Very, very heavy ratchet joints. Um, outward movement, you do have a good range of motion there. You do have... A over 90 degree elbow bend as well as a bicep swivel that does spin full 360 hands are on 360 uh, spin or 360 swivel ratchet joints in the fingers here are um, a entire molded segment so they do move together and you can open and close the thumb and if you happen to have maybe perhaps a core class Megatron or a little teeny tiny baby star screen that came and a little Hershey's mystery box, you can have the arc um, holding a Decepticon with no problem. Pulling that out, you do have a full 360 weight swivel as demonstrated during the transformation. Uh, legs can, uh, do, the legs do have a considerable amount of movement. You can get outward movement with the legs to a considerable degree. 
you do have backwards movement again to a dis, uh, to a considerable degree, and you do have a lot of forward movement as well. You do have a size swivel. Unfortunately, it's not full 360 due to the fact that uh, this section here gets in the way, and then you do have a knee bend that closes up over 90 degrees. And then you do have a ankle tilt. It is very slight, but is an ankle tilt. So, conclusion, very poseable. Very loud, but very poseable. And for robot mode size comparisons, let's bring in core class rat trap. Bring in deluxe class cheetor. Let's bring in a Voyager class Optimus Prime. You know, our leader class figure, but it's actually just a Voyager base mold. Let's bring in one of my other favorite figures from Kingdom, Voyager class Dinobot. Let's bring in a leader class Kingdom Megatron. And let's bring in leader class SS86 Grimlock. So we can see that this is quite a gargantuan figure. Um, Grimlock, I think, is the only one that makes it really past his knee. Um, so just lowering the camera down so you can get a good sense of scale how big these figures are compared to him. You can see uh, this is a big figure. <laughs> it is just a ginormous figure. But there are your um, uh, core class to leader class size comparisons. I'm going to clear this off and do one more size comparison. And for another Titan class size comparison, here is Power of the Prime's Titan class Predaking. And the art here, as you can see, is a like a full head and a half taller than Predaking. I mean, this this is a huge uh, figure by a long shot. So there you have a size comparison between uh, two Titan class figures. And just if you're really curious about the nitty gritty details, here he is next to a tape measure. So you can get the exact height there. So, there you have that. And, of course, we cannot forget size comparisons with our little teeny tiny baby Optimus Prime. Just to see how this guy scales with the arc. So, there you have size comparisons. So overall, what are my official thoughts and opinions about the Transformers Kingdom Titan class Autobot arc? I think overall this is a fantastic figure. A flawless figure? No. I've mentioned my issues I have with it though, and I definitely do feel like they are outweighed by the good things this figure has going for it. Um, overall, his shuttle mode, the arc, uh, looks absolutely fantastic. Um, it does have a few issues like I mentioned, but the transformation between the two modes um, is actually really fun and satisfying to run through. It's uh, simplistic, it's not overcomplicated, nothing doesn't really have a tendency to get in the way um, of other moving components, and I feel like it is really well done. And then we get to the robot mode. And I think for an original character design, this is really, really cool. I love the head sculpt for this figure. Um, I think it really does look fantastic. And the articulation for this figure as well is pretty much um, just on point. Uh, the only thing that this figure really, I mean, this is kind of a nitpick. The only thing this figure really could have benefited from was maybe a up and down um so some form of up and down joint at the head, but that is kind of a nitpick. It doesn't even bother me. That's only uh, something I would see other uh, other collectors really wanting. Um, but I mean, other than that, the posability is really, really solid for this guy. And the ratchet joints are tight enough where this figure, you could shake it and he is not really going to move from any poses. Um, so definitely a solid figure in robot mode. And then he does come with mainframe as well. And you don't need mainframe, as I mentioned, to complete the arc in robot mode. You can have mainframe posed right next to the arc if you wanted to, or you can have him, you know, kind of transformed into Teletram one mode next to Wheeljack or whatever you want to really do with him. I feel like he's definitely a cool little side piece to go with this figure as well. So overall, is this a good figure and do I recommend it? Yes, if you can get your hands on this guy and if you have the shelf space for this guy or the room for this guy in your collection, pick him up. I definitely don't think you'll regret it. Um, even with the issues I have on my personal copy, I still love having this guy in my collection. I'm glad I went ahead 
and pre-ordered him. Now, the pre-order I got was a little bit delayed, so um, yeah, it did take it a little bit to get here, but either way, I'm still glad to have this guy in my collection. And again, if you can get it, I feel like you will not regret the decision to because the accuracy of his shuttle mode to the design of the arc is extremely, um, extremely faithful. And I feel like the robot mode definitely is a centerpiece for anyone's collection. So guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to leave a like, comment what you think of the arc down in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me, Champion Productions, signing off.